Three, two, one, action. Honestly, I kind of like it. Alright, it's officially the morning of the shoot, and to be honest, I'm pretty nervous. What the fuck did I get myself into? Hopefully it goes well. There's 15 people coming out to this thing for me. So we'll see how it goes. The idea is fairly simple. I want to show a character in different articles of clothing for each day while we film different acts in her extravagant house. If you'd like to see more about the creative, then I'll link the video somewhere above here. As for the technical stuff, we used my Canon C200 with Nikon AIS primes, and we had my friend Mike doing the Steadicam opping, and we also rented a package truck from my local rental house, which came with a bunch of aperture fixtures, grip equipment, and we also utilized these light bridge reflectors. Initially at the start of the day, it takes a bit of time to find your footing, so right away we fell 45 minutes behind, so already the pressure was on. I, I knew that was going to be, be a problem. So yeah, I should have something in there. Yeah. Okay. Cut. Fucking hectic dude. <laughs> Just bombarded with questions. But after a few takes, things started to go more smoothly and we found a rhythm that works. We should be minutes away. We're just gonna catch this. Two, one, action. Yeah, that was it. We got this, guys. After that is his desk, so I want you to tell people what to do with lighting what. 100%. Cinematography. As for cinematography, we mostly lit through the windows because it allows everyone to move a lot more freely and I always like it better to light a room versus lighting an individual shot because you're able to move a lot more quickly. One of my favorite tools for creating hard light is these light bridge reflectors which my gaffer so nicely brought. We're using CRLS so that we can get the light up into the foyer over there. But we're just taking this 600 or the 1200D, we're shooting it into that reflector up there and then the reflection is going in as a hard source inside. So rather than putting this 1200D that high in the air and making it dangerous, we instead send the light rays up there and use reflection instead. So he's probably gonna show you in the edit the actual resulting shot. They're basically a set of mirrors with different sizes and different strength of diffusion to create different qualities of light. It allowed us to light into the second floor because we would put a light bridge reflector really high up on a stand and have a fixture on the ground level pointed up into the reflector. Oh, yep, hold it there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it, thank you. Lock that in. We would also take an Aperture Nova, which we would bounce into the ceiling, which sells the effect of more daylight coming in. Yeah, let's come up a bit on the ambient. Yeah, honestly, I kind of like it, like, more high-key. Action. So we shot this entire project on just one lens, the Nikon 20mm AIS lens. I wanted our world to feel as big as possible and I wanted our camera moves to feel as drastic as possible. Location. When shooting specs, people often forget that things in front of the camera add a lot of production value. It's not always about camera and lighting. I wanted to shoot in a great location because things like that add a lot of production value. I came across this really cool location in Toronto called the Darling Mansion, but it wasn't cheap. It came with a hefty price tag of $200 an hour, but after showing people the final result, the first thing they always say is something about the location, so I feel like it paid off in that respect. The location also did a ton of heavy lifting in terms of production design and art direction, because there was a lot of cool things to work with already, it was just a matter of taking some things away and making it our taste. And then we'll put something over top and cover it with pillows. I pretty much wrote the entire creative around this location because I knew how much production value would add, especially when you have a variety of different rooms to shoot in. It shows people that things were thought out and planned, which makes things look a lot more high budget than they actually were, which is the whole goal with spec work. You didn't catch that, did you? I did. Crew. 
I've worked in the lighting department for three years now, so I built up a good network of people and a good network of friends, which is why I was able to get so many people to come out and help with this one. When you're trying to move up the ladder, it's really all about the network of people that you know. I offered a very small honorarium, which gave them a very small incentive to come out and help with this one, but by no means did anyone come out to this project for money. Since everyone on this project had real set experience, I knew I could rely on them and make it feel like a real set, which it was. That's something I was super grateful for. All these people came out to support me and they knew I was super passionate about this project and I knew they'd be looking out for the best interest of this project and give it their all. There were no egos involved and it felt like good teamwork coming together to create something which every good set should have. It's all about the relationships you build and the attitudes you have toward others, which will get people in to come out and help with your small projects. Palette. When our actor Hannah sent her application for this project, I knew right away she'd be the perfect fit because of her experience level. I feel like that's also something that gets heavily overlooked when shooting spec projects is having a good actor because people don't realize how much production value that can add. Since it was pretty much my first time directing talent, Hannah was amazing to work with because of her experience level and things were pretty straightforward. Directing talent was one of my favorite parts of this whole shoot because I had to describe what I was hoping to get and express the actions I was hoping to get as well. Uh, give me like a funny reaction like, ooh. Great, fuck yeah. You guys can go like opposite of each other. Yeah. This is my first time DPing and directing something simultaneously. Now, why was it such a challenge? Well, normally this is a two-person job. The director usually handles the creative stuff and the DP handles the camera and lighting stuff. Put those two things together and you've got double the amount of stress. Very quick lighting tweaks. Let's do one more rehearsal and then I just want to finesse lighting a little bit. Okay. Since I'm primarily focused on being a DP, lighting is super important to me, but since I also had to direct and steer the ship on this one, I couldn't primarily focus on lighting. That was probably the hardest part with this whole thing was balancing DPing and directing. That's it. That's a wrap, everyone. See you later. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.